You can turn your Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 2. I'm going to do a real short video here explaining why young children cannot be saved. Uh, one of the worst things out there, one of the worst deceptions out there is the thing of uh, childhood conversions. I'm going to show you why that, that is a complete total lie. Romans chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. For when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Okay? In other words, no adult can claim, well, I never heard, I never heard, I didn't know about God or whatever else. God writes their, His law on their conscience. Nobody out there thinks, you know, at least the first time that they would do it, nobody out there thinks that it's right to lie or to steal or to kill someone. Um, that's not there. You have to kill your conscience to be able to do that. And, of course, they might not understand some of the things about, you know, not taking the name of the Lord thy God in vain and things. Even that, though, I think the first time you do it, it probably feels a little bit uncomfortable and things. So God's law is written on people's uh, hearts, on their conscience, right? But when does that come in? Chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Well, it's, everybody's there. They're going to be judged and things like this. Well, but uh, when do they understand that? See, that's the, that's the issue here. Romans chapter 3, verse 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Here we're getting into the whole thing. When do you get the knowledge of sin? You see? A young child isn't going to have that knowledge. They are not going to understand God's laws that are written in their heart. That comes later on in life. Romans chapter 4, verse 15. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Wait a second there. The law is written in your heart. What do you mean? Where there's no law, there's no transgression. What's the context? What's this talking about? It's talking about a young child. Obviously. I mean, it can't be talking about somebody who's older and things like that. They, they understand the law is written in their heart. It's on their conscience. Right? A young child, on the other hand, has no possible way that they can understand, hey, I've, I've sinned against a holy, righteous God. I've broken one of His commands here. I, the, the, I've broken His law. A young child can't do that. You know how I know? Because I have a young child. I have a three-year-old little boy. And that little boy does not have enough wisdom and understanding to be able to say, hey, I understand I've sinned against a holy, righteous God here. He can't do it. I mean, his little mind, you know, Lord bless little children and things. I love little children. Um, both my son, of course, and my nephews and nieces I had for years and years, and they just flip-flop all the time. Today they're going to be a firefighter. Tomorrow they're going to be a soldier. The next day, you know, a niece will be a, a ballerina, then she's going to be a, you know, a queen or a princess or something like that. They're just all over the place with what they want to be in their life and what they're pretending and what they're thinking and stuff like this. And then they get tired and they're crying or they laugh. <laughs> you know, so. And they can understand that they've sinned against the holy, righteous God. No, they can't. That's why if a child dies at a very young age, they'll go to be with the Lord. Why? Sin cannot be charged to them. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 through 13. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Can't be talking about older people. Adults, the law is written in their heart. Their conscience bears witness. Who is it talking about? Sin is not imputed when there is no law. It's talking about little children. Now, here's a question. Can somebody get saved if they come to the Lord and don't admit that they're a sinner? 
No, I'm not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mark chapter 2, you know, they that are whole have no need of, need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Mark chapter 2, verse 17. It is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So if a child, if sin can't be imputed to a child because they don't under, understand the law, then they can't get saved. What are they getting saved from? Sin is not imputed to them. There's no need for them to get saved. Do you understand? God in His mercy and in His love for the dear little children out there is not going to say, hey, you were three months old and you were killed in that car accident, but I saw you, you know, whatever. You dishonored me at such and such a time, so I'm going to burn you in the fires of hell. You wicked little toddler, you. You know, infant, excuse me, not a toddler, little infant. And you little two-year-old. Stand there and, and you get, get your finger, your thumb out of your mouth, you know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to condemn you to hell. No, no, not our holy, righteous God. Now, if it works that way, he can't impute sin to them when they don't understand the law, then how on earth could he grant them salvation? Revelation chapter 12. And I'm saying this because there's some uh, professing Christians out there that will try to tell you that they got saved as a very young, at a very young age. And they lack one very important thing that's there for every Christian. You say, what's that, brother? Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 through 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. What is mark of true salvation? The blood of the Lamb. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. If the blood of the Lamb hasn't washed your sins away, you're going to die and go to hell. The blood of the Lamb. The word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, is where that's at. When you get saved, you're not going to turn against the Lord. You might mess up. You might really make a mess of your life as a Christian. I've seen that plenty of times. But you'll never hate Jesus Christ and turn against Jesus Christ and whatever else. You'll love not your life unto the death. In other words, you'll be willing to die for Jesus Christ. You won't reject Him, is what I'm trying to say. When you truly get born again because you put your faith in him i mean it's just he is all he's everything to you you know you can mess up your life in the flesh but you're never going to turn on jesus christ and just hate his guts after you get saved i don't believe that for one minute but let me ask you a question what good is your salvation if you have no testimony And I'm not saying you got to be, you know, the most wicked, horrible, evil person in the world and have this wild testimony how you got saved or something. No, you don't need that. Um, but even the youngest person that gets saved, a teenager or something like that, that gets truly born again, they'll still have some kind of a testimony there. There's still going to be some kind of a sin that convicted them, broke their heart, you know, kind of. The law is written in your heart. And all of a sudden you realize... Oh man, I don't, I don't know if I'd go to heaven if I died. And you start to get scared. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Amazing grace. Mm -hmm. And you'll come to the Lord and you're just, God, I, I need to know. I need to know. Please save me. And you'll get saved and you'll see the change that happens, that supernatural change. And you just go, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Why do these people write these hymns? Because they experience it. And you've experienced it if you're, if you're saved. The whole world is just different now. 
now that I'm born again. It just, wow, such a neat thing. But you get these people and they say, I, I was saved at a very young age. Uh, what's your testimony? Well, I was saved at a very young age. Nope, sorry, didn't take. A young child, and I don't, there's no age of accountability as far as a specific age, 10 years old and younger is under the age of accountability, and 11 and older is... You know, there are children that mature at different times. But the whole point is, a child that has no knowledge of their sin, that they, I go down to my son, three-year-old son, and say, son, you sinned against God. He just goes, okay, you know, like, can we play with Legos? You know, he, he doesn't know. He doesn't understand such things. We explain to him about God. We read from the Bible to him every day, you know, multiple times throughout the day. A lot of times he'll ask, can, you know, can we read the Bible? Can we read the Bible? You know, he loves to, to, to read the Bible and, and things and but does he know he's a sinner? That he's wrong God? Of course he doesn't. And yet I've heard people profess to be saved at two years old. Three years old. Back in those years. No way. No way. No possible way. A child that age, how are they going to get convicted of sin? Or they, they, they have a, a messy diaper and they didn't tell mommy about it or something like that? And that was the day that they got convicted and realized that they were going to hell, that they, you know, I mean, what do you get convicted of when you're two years old? What sins do you commit that turn you towards Jesus Christ? So what I'm saying is whenever you hear a preacher or a professor, not a preacher, <laughs> well, some of them do, but you know, whenever you hear somebody that's a professing Christian and they come out and they say, I got saved at a quote, very young age, um, ask them for their testimony. How young did you get saved? And if it's under 10 years old, I mean, no. you know, I first made a profession of salvation at eight years old. And uh, I remember Sunday school class and things, and it was, you know, they talked about hell and everything else. And, and um, you know, if, if you don't want to go to hell when you die, you know, do you want to get saved? There were other children that did it, so I thought, well, I don't want to go to hell, you know. And I was sincere, but there was never any kind of a thing explained to me. Do you realize that you've sinned against the holy, righteous God? I had no idea. I just, I didn't want to go to hell when I died. I don't know. I didn't have any conviction of sin or anything else. And for years and years and years, I trusted in that profession that I had made. And sadly, there's a lot of people that uh, they don't grow out of that. They go through confirmation as a Catholic or whatever else. Well, I'm, I'm a member of the church. You know, I, I was confirmed. I was baptized as a baby and everything else. And they stick with that thing. And they think, well, I think I'll be all right. I think I'll be all right. I think I'll be all right. They never come to the end of their self-righteous pride. And you get these other people and they go through this childhood conversion thing. And they go through their life and they try their best and they can study the Bible and whatever else. But you see, that's why they get offended at the thing of repent of sin. You need to turn from your sin and things like that. Oh, they get real offended at that. They don't like that. Why? Because they never broken. They were never broken. They never came to the Lord as a sinner. That's the case. So, please, another standard that Christians need to have. Somebody says, I'm a Christian. You say, oh, when did you get saved? What's your testimony? And if they ever say, I got saved at a, quote, very young age, then you better ask them, how young? What are you talking about? What's your testimony? I want to hear it. And if there was no conviction of sin, and then they're telling you, I got saved at two years old, three years old, five years old, or something like this, it didn't take. It did not take. It's not possible. Why would God go to write these verses here in the book of Romans that we read about? Why would he put that stuff in there? Sin is not imputed when there is no law. Unless your name is whatever. <laughs> you know, then you, gotta, then you could understand salvation as a two-year-old. So, just wanted to make this quick little video. I was thinking about this the other day, and I thought, you know, I need to put something out on that. So, uh, please be careful. False prophets out there, there's a lot of them. Thank you for watching.